everyone and welcome back. So today we're going to be doing something a little different than usual. Of course, if you're watching my channel, you know that men mainly I only center around the Nintendo Switch. However, if you've been following the channel for a while, you also know that I'm generally a retro fanatic. I collect pretty much all retro consoles. I have a retro game collection and all of that. Now, although this doesn't mean that I'm shifting my focus whatsoever, I just thought that today I'd share a retro modding video with all of you. I know in the past these videos haven't done too well, and honestly, I don't even care if this video does well or not, but this was a mod that I've been wanting to do for such a long time and that I'm so excited about that I said, you know what, why not make a video out of it? And basically that's making what I would call the ultimate Game Boy. Now, if you grew up in the late 80s to early 90s, there's no way you don't know what this is. But if you didn't grow, out in, grow up in that era, basically this is the classic first Game Boy that Nintendo produced. And it revolutionized portable gaming. However, it had one really major flaw. The screen on it was terrible. You need to be in a really, really well lit room or have a light source directly on the screen to be able to play this thing efficiently. Because basically the screen was not backlit in any way and the contrast on it was really so-so. And the main point of today's mod is to correct that one point because we're going to be basically installing the RetroPixel IPS display from Funny Playing. But we're not going to stop there. We're also going to reshell the Game Boy into one of these really awesome extreme rate Game Boy shells. Now, just so that everything is on the up and up before we get started, the funny plane display was not provided. I purchased that right out myself. However, the shell was provided to me by Extreme Rate. But I want to be very clear, this is not a sponsored video. They're not paying me in any way. It's just that basically Extreme Rate provides me with their products when I want to do a video series like this, gives them a little bit of visibility. And basically, I love using their products because I actually believe that they're quality products. If you look in the past, I did a mod where I basically reshelled this Nintendo Switch Pro Controller and I was really amazed by the quality of their shell. And I also did the uh, Switch Dock. You can check those out. I'm just mentioning that it's not the first time I'm using their product and that's why I, I trusted them to send me a quality shell. And I've got to tell you, I am pretty amazed by this thing. So if I wasn't believing in their products, since I'm not even being paid in any way I wouldn't be even talking about them like this so but anyway as usual just because they provided to me for this for free I'm going to leave my affiliate link down below to their products on Amazon because they're available on Amazon check them out if you're looking for something but then again like I said you don't need to use my link because it's not an affiliate it's not affiliated to them in any way it's just my regular affiliate link so other though than the shell replacement and basically the uh, screen replacement, I'm also going to be putting in a fresh Game Boy speaker just because this one is starting to scratch a little bit sound wise. So I'm going to just replace it with a brand new one that I picked up at the same time. Uh, tool wise, if you want to do this mod yourself, you're most likely going to need at least an X-Acto knife or a, uh, you know, a hobby knife. Uh, I recommend using some kind of rotary tool to help you, you know, smooth out the edges because we will have to do a, a, a little bit of slight modifications to the shell itself. And obviously you'll need your kit of, you know, specialized screwdrivers for the tri-wing screwdrivers to dis disassemble your Game Boy. And if you are going to be installing the speaker like I am, you are going to also need a, a, a soldering iron. but. Since it's just a speaker and it's like basically four little dabs, uh, you can go with a really cheap $15 one. You can get away with that for this kind of mod. It's not an issue whatsoever. Anyway, we're just about to get started on the modding process. But just before that, don't forget that if you actually do like this kind of videos and you would like to see more, hit the like button. I'll know that every now and then I can throw in a retro video and it will still interest some of you out there. At the same time, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, you can always hit that subscription bell. It really helps a lot. Now, the first thing we're actually going to do to start out the mod is we're going to prep the shell. Because as I said, there were a little bit of modifications that we actually have to bring to the shell itself. Now, this is a replacement shell. OK, and the mods we have to do is basically we have to remove these two posts right here. And 
we have to trim the opening around the screen display because the replacement display is a little bit bigger than the original one. And basically, I'm going to try and bring it closer to the camera. If you see, there's a lip right here. Basically, what you want to do is you want to remo remove the lip from all around here. At the bottom here, the lip sort of curves out, but you're not going to want to remove that curve. You're just going to basically remove exactly where the where the normal lip would be in a straight line. So basically how we're going to do that, and I forgot to show this tool, uh, I'm going to use a couple of uh, snipping shears to remove most of the posts here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our knife and we're going to trace around the edge to basically get ourselves a working line through the plastic and just pass our knife through it till we actually get through most of the plastic. And hopefully at the end, we'll be able to just snap off the edge. And then I'll be using the rotary tool to basically smooth out the edges for the posts and smooth out the edges around the display to have a really nice finish. Now, obviously, I'm going to be doing this in accelerated format because it takes a little bit of time if you want to do this carefully and make sure that you don't like, you know, leave any traces that you can see from the outside of the shell. So uh, I'm going to be accelerating it. But, you know, this process, I would say, easily takes like a good 20 to 25 minutes if you want to do it carefully and make sure that you don't damage your shell. Uh, also, one last little tidbit before I get started on the actual work. Uh, I recommend if this is the first time you're doing this mod, take a don't take a clear shell. Like this shell is not a problem because it's not clear in any way. It's not see-through. Because if you do a see-through shell, you have to really make sure that you know how to properly get the edges nice and clean because or else you'll actually see the mods peeking through through the clear shell. You'll see where the cut lines are and stuff like that. So my recommendation for this particular mod is to not go with a clear shell for the Game Boy. So basically, once you have that cut out, you don't have to worry too much about the edges being perfectly straight and whatnot, because basically, eventually, when you're going to be putting this on, your, hit, your edges are actually going to be hidden by the end screen. The point of basically going with the rotary tool around the edges is just to make sure that they're nice and smooth so that you don't actually have any rough edges that might actually damage your display. And you don't want any sort of rough edges either that could maybe even scratch your display if it moves a little bit when it's in your shell. And even the most important part I would say is making sure that where you the two posts are, it's really nice and smooth. So if you don't have a rotary tool, you can actually use a little piece of sandpaper normally and go over it with your hand. That's perfectly fine as well. It might take a little more time, but it'll work just as well in the end. Now, the next part to the mod is we're going to obviously be disassembling uh, the old school Game Boy and uh, taking the parts we're going to need and basically uh, reshelling it. So if you've never disassembled this Game Boy, uh, I actually have a better video on the channel for disassembling a video. 
And just because this video will probably be long enough in its entirety, I'm going to accelerate the disassembly process other until we get to the really inner components where we have to talk about what we need and what we don't need. Now, contrary to usual, we're actually going to start with the back section. The reason why is because if you were just replacing the screen and you were actually not reshelling the Game Boy, you could actually leave the back section as is. You don't need to touch it at all. However, since we're also reshelling the Game Boy, well, we'll have to remove all the components from the back part of the shell to transplant them into basically the replacement shell. Now, in my case, I'm not going to do it because I've already worked on this Game Boy, so I know I fully cleaned it. But if this is the first time you're disassembling your Game Boy, before actually putting it in the shell, I would strongly recommend cleaning out the cartridge slot and the power switch as well, because this is a perfect time to do so since you have it all apart like this. Basically, you just need to drop, drop a little bit of rubbing alcohol in there, go in with a Q-tip as best as you can, same thing for the power switch. You drop a few drops of rubbing alcohol in there. You toggle the switch back and forth. It really just gets out some of the crust. So now we're getting to the really interesting part of the mod. We're actually going to be assembling the display. Now the display comes in two parts. You have the first part of the ribbon cable right here and the display itself. What you need to do is there's a little connector here. You need to connect basically the display to the connector on that ribbon. Once you have that attached, what you're going to want to do is you're going to flip your display around and I'm going to use a little piece of double sided tape to basically tape it to the back of the display itself. Now, the next step, if you have it, is to place a protective layer over the chips here. I actually have capped on tape, which is specialized tape to prevent elect electrical shorts, but it's not a necessary thing. Like since there's very, these are very low voltages, if you use some regular scotch tape, you're most likely never gonna have any difficulties. I just already have the capped on tape. So, you know, if I have it, why not use it? So just to make sure as well, I'm going to be applying a second little piece here at the top over the second chip just to make sure that there's no possibility of shorting against any of the internal components. Now you can set the display aside and we're gonna move over to the front of the shell. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna install basically the rubber dampener for our display on the front of the shell. Now the ideal thing is to line up that little notch here, right here on the side against this little column there. And basically, as best you can, place the rubber dampener around the shell that you just trimmed earlier. And ideally, it should match up pretty closely, just like it is here. So the next part is going to be installing the display. Now, I personally am using a 3D printed uh, bracket to basically make sure my screen is properly aligned. You don't necessarily have to use this bracket. If not, the basic kit comes with just a few covers for basically these screw holes here, just to basically make sure that the PCB doesn't come directly into contact with the back of the screen. But if you have a centering bracket like this, it makes the installation of the screen a lot, lot easier. Just be very careful because the screen is very, very sensitive and very delicate. So it's really easy to crack basically the LCD. So we're just going to peel off the 3M tape now on the inside of our case. I'm going to remove the protective film on the front of our screen. And we are just going to basically line up the top here and the screws and then just press down firmly but not too much pressure because you really want to make sure that you do not crush the screen in any way. Because like I said, it is extremely delicate. I've actually broken 
similar LCDs in the past. Now to finish up with the front of the case, we just have to drop in the different buttons into place. D-pad. And I'm right away going to put in also the rubber stoppers. Don't forget your start and select buttons. So for the front of our display, we are pretty much done. So next step, we're just going to solder on basically the speaker to the PCB. And then we can just basically get started on our final assembly. So now this is the part that not maybe everyone's going to do because your kit might actually come with a pre-installed speaker. Since my speaker was not pre-installed, well, I'm going to have to solder on the replacement speakers. So I already placed one wire here. It's pretty simple. This is a pretty simple solder job. So basically, we're, you're just going to put the wire through and we're just going to... Basically do a very simple solder point onto the board. Simple as that. Wire straight. Even, even a bit. Bit of solder on. And we have our solder points done. Now the speaker came with pre-applied solder on its points. So I'm just going to be putting on a little bit of paste. Perfect. So now that we have our front speaker soldered on, what we're going to want to do is basically flip it over and connect our ribbon cable here. I'm just going to make sure it's completely open. Put it in and then basically press down on the clamps equally to lock it in. Now the next step is we're going to be putting our front PCB in. So basically, number one, we're going to want to make sure that our speaker is properly placed. And then it's simply a question of lining up the PCB with the back of the screen, just like so. Now it's time to take those screws that we took out of the front of the display. And we're going to be using those screws to basically lock in our PCB. Perfect. So we're almost done. Now the last part of the inner assembly is basically putting this ribbon into the slot. Now I already installed it on the bottom section. Basically what you want to make sure is if you can see the ribbon has a non-metallic side and a metallic side. Basically the metallic side you want to be pointing towards the bottom. Like this other side is exactly the same as this one. And as you can see, the part that you see is the non-metallic side. So you want to make sure that the metallic side is pointing downwards. And then basically what you're going to want to do is flip the other side of your Game Boy over. And as you can see, you have to slot it in right there. Unfortunately, camera wise, this is going to be pretty hard to show. So once it's slotted in, it's going to be looking something like this. And basically the last part is to just scrunch these two parts together, making sure that all your innards line up. And finally, closing the Game Boy in the back with the six included screws with your case normally. Now, just before we get on to the final, final steps, 
let's do the moment of truth and just make sure that basically our mod is functioning and you can see now on the screen we have our beautiful retro pixel that is now installed our rockers working for basically making it brighter or dimmer everything seems good to go so just a final little wipe down make sure that there's no finger marks or anything on the screen I always do this extremely lightly because once again I can't repeat it enough that the screen is delicate now with your retro pixel you should have got a specially sized uh, basically cover screen for your Game Boy so the last step will be taking that out and removing the 3M tape from the back Don't forget the one on the middle part because we're going to be want to be able to see through our screen, obviously. And we're going to place it on the front of our Game Boy. And as you see, this is what I was talking about. Even if your sides were slightly uneven, because this cover comes to on the front, none of it can be seen. The only important thing is to make sure that you cut within the border of the screen so that nothing peeks out. So now that we have the actual retro pixel installed, I can show you just what this display can do because it doesn't simply make the image clearer and backlit the screen. This screen has 36 different colors and offers you a true view or a pixelated view. So just first, let's just see what I mean by pixelated or a true view. So if you hold down the contrast button, because you can now push the contrast button in. So if you push it in and you hold it for a few seconds, you'll see that there you get a pixelated grid view, which will look closer to what the original Game Boy screen looked like, but it's also going to be a lot less clear. As you can see, it sort of becomes fuzzy and you can basically see the grid lines. I'm going to be mostly using it in the other mode. So if we hold it back down again a few seconds, there we get the true view, which gives you the clear screen like a modern IPS display. Basically, you can't see the grid lines anymore that make up the screen. But that's not all. Up and down will basically control your brightness. So you can go brighter or darker, depending on the room you're playing in and whatever you like. But if you then push it in a quick press and you go up and down, you also have 36 different screen colors that you can choose from. Going from blue palettes, purple, red palettes, yellow, back to standard white, gray. And the craziest one, I'm going to try to get to it, is there's even an inverted palette, which basically looks like you're playing in negative space. Let me just find it. And there it is. Now this is the craziest one. So it took me a while to find it, but you basically go up and down and you cycle through all the different colors. And basically anything goes, you go with whatever feels best to you. But honestly, this th turns your old school Game Boy into a crazy efficient viewing screen. So basically, you know, if your eyes respond better to yellowish colors, you go with yellow. If you like better purplish tones, you can go for that. You can even go for the classic greenish tint from the original Game Boy. The sky is the limit with this IPS display. It is insane. That is why I chose it. Not only because it's supposed to be one of the clearest and a very easy mod to do, but also at the same time, it offers crazy options for viewing your Game Boy games after that. So anyway, uh, now let's just go to the conclusion now that we have a good idea of how this IPS works and all, everything it can offer. So here we are, one and a half hour of work later, and that's including filming time. So if you're doing this without trying to film everything you're doing, you can probably pop one of these out between 45 minutes to an hour, but basically, what we did is we took this old Game Boy and we perfectly transformed it into this ultimate Game Boy. Now, 
I might have mentioned it in the intro. My mind's playing tricks on me tonight because it's pretty late and I'm recording. But I do want to just reiterate that I purposely don't do battery mods on my first generation Game Boys just because these are a bit of battery hogs. Like they really drain the battery quick. And even with a lithium ion battery in there, you wind up having to recharge them every like two or three hours. So rather than having to do that and stop playing with it while it's charging or, you know, playing, but with a, a wire basically connecting it to the charger, I prefer just using rechargeable batteries for my first generation Game Boy and being able to swap them out freely just because I have a ton of AA rechargeable batteries. Now, I really got to say that this shell from Extreme Rate I know I said it at the beginning of the video, but it is really, really high quality stuff. Of course, they're painted shells. You could see from the inside that basically when we got to modding them, uh, the inside color was different. But all of these shells are painted. But what really sets the extreme rate shells apart is the quality of plastic they use. It's really thick and durable plastic. And they are really, really form fitted to the exact specifications of the original Game Boy. And plus, this chameleon purple color that they came out with looks just crazy amazing. And I was really looking forward to doing this mod. I actually have the matching shell for the Game Boy Color, which I plan to mod uh, pretty soon. So depending on how this video does, because basically, like I said, I know that normally I don't do a lot of retro stuff. And I know that most of my fans are probably here for Switch stuff and not necessarily uh, retro gaming. But, you know, if this video does well, I most likely will film the mod on my game on the Game Boy Color as well. If not, I just might do it in the background. But if you go to my Twitter, I most likely will be tweeting the images of it once it's done. So if you follow me there, you'll be able to take a look at what it turned out to be anyways. Now, if you want to do this mod yourself, I'm going to be leaving links down below for extreme the extreme rate shell I used. I'm also going to be leaving a link to retro modding where I bought my funny plane IPS display so you can pick it up from them. You can pick it up from anyone else. Uh, feel free to use the links if you want to. Uh, the links down below are going to be Amazon affiliate links for the extreme rate shells. Uh, also, you know, as usual, if you did like this video, the best way to show me that you liked it and that you would like to maybe see from time to time a little bit more retro stuff is to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, as usual, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my new videos come out. And as in every one of my videos, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you in my next one.